Hey, hey, thank you for joining me again. Another episode of Talks with Tony. Hey, I got an email from a young lady and it says, hello, Mr. Tony Gaskins. I listen to your show daily. I'm trying to close a chapter in my life and I have bitter feelings and I'm trying to resolve them the godly way. I have had a friend I knew for 30 plus years. I had a crush on him since I was 16 years old. Needless to say, he became a Catholic priest and became ordained in 1986. So 96, 2006, 30 years ago? We've, we have been friends all this time. As a friend and priest, he knew me completely and I trusted him with everything. In 2010, so nine years ago, I found out through a friend he was no longer a priest because he had fathered a child. I was disappointed and he didn't tell me because I thought that we were really friends. I was disappointed that he didn't tell me because I thought that we were friends. I forgave him and continued our friendship. We always had an attraction to one another, but never explored it because of him becoming a priest. Until a couple years ago, he moved to Florida and we became inseparable. He proposed to me and we decided to start a business together. Four months into the engagement, things started to change and we got into a big argument, which I said some things that was bothering me and he didn't like it. Well, he moved back to our hometown. When I asked him about our relationship in business, he never responded back to me. I am tired. No, I tried calling and texting him to resolve the problem, but never got a response back. I felt like he used me or he never was my friend to begin with. How can I resolve a situation when the person doesn't care to respond, trying to move on? Okay. Well, thank you so much for writing in and y'all forgive me on the reading part. It's, you know, she sent it with an iPhone. So it was some, some typos in there. You know how the iPhone does. It's a few things that jumped out to me and I'm trying to get these dates right. And so you've known him for 30 plus years and he was since 16, you've had a crush on him. And then he became a Catholic priest and got ordained in 86. And so I was trying to do my math. 96, 2006, 2016, so 2019, 33 years. And you say you've known him for 30 plus years. And y'all kept in touch. 2010, you found out he wasn't a priest anymore and he fathered a child. Y'all got together. Now, here's the thing. And this is just a rule of thumb and this is for everybody listening because, you know, your situation is kind of, you know, it's kind of done. But it's very, very rarely can you take a friend, a platonic friend, a genuine friend and turn them into your lover. And what you have to understand here is that if a man is OK being your friend, then he doesn't want to be your lover. But see, here's what happened. He went through so much. He experienced so much in his life. It's been so many years. So from 86 to two years ago, I think you said until a couple years ago, which was probably 2017 or 2016, depending on, you know, what you're really referring to. So you're looking at 30 years, 96, 2006, 2016. So for 30 years, he's been dealing with this priesthood stuff and you've known him that time. He went and fathered a child, which means when he saw the woman that he was into, that he was attracted to sexually, he got her pregnant. He got her pregnant and lost his priesthood and then after that didn't work out, he made her a baby mama. He's a baby daddy. He moves on with his life. And then about six, seven years later, because that was 2010, but you didn't say when he had fathered the child. So it could have even been earlier. But by the time you got to him at this point, I mean, he's older. He, he, he's still not married. 
he's lost, he's confused, he's hurting. So see, you got to take all these things into consideration and then you go and you get with them. You turn a friend into a lover. And that is that never really works because men are hunters by nature. It's impossible for us to be platonic friends with a woman that we are attracted to unless we know that she's married and she's off limits and she's absolutely not interested. But you said we had an attraction to one another, which really means you had an attraction to him just because he was nice to you and he talked to you or maybe even he told you he had an attraction. That's not true if he doesn't act on it. And it's not because he didn't act on it because he was becoming a priest because he went and got another woman pregnant. So to everyone out there listening, you can't turn a friend into a lover. Now, yes, you should be friends with your lover. But so what this means is that when you meet somebody, you need to decide, is this going to be a friend or is this going to be a lover? And if you decide this is going to be a lover, then you build that loving, intimate relationship. You build it on friendship. But if you say this is a friend, you got to keep it in that box for good. And the reason why I've never heard yet to, the, to this date, and I receive thousands of emails and I deal with so many people, I've never heard a story that says this person was my best friend for five years, seven years, 10 years, 20 years, you know, 30 years, like you said, and then we became lovers and it's been amazing and it's been perfect. But if I had a dollar for every time I've heard I was best friends with this man, or this woman and then we became a couple and it turned out disastrous. If I had a dollar for every time, I have a million dollars. And the reason why is because you've been put in a box and you learn languages of communication with a friend and it's totally different. It's totally different in a relationship. And so that's where you went wrong. Your desperation set in, you, you've been, you said 30 plus years, you had a crush since 16. So 30 plus 16, that makes you at least 46 to still be single. Um, you didn't mention you having any kids and that he accepted your kids like, like your own or that he treated your kids like his own. I mean, you didn't mention your kids. Maybe you have kids, but 46 and to be able to get engaged at 46, it lets me know that is some desperation on your part. So you overlook the red flags. He has desperation to leave the hometown and move to Florida to be with you. And then not only does he move to Florida and get engaged, y'all start a business. So see, I'm, I'm, I'm listing this out because I want you to start thinking. If you're under the sound of my voice, I want you to start thinking like this and looking at red flags and all of the red flags that we ignore when we're embarking upon a relationship. And so for you to call him out and say some things that has been on your heart and then for him to cut you cold turkey and move back to your hometown and you can't reach him. Yes, it, it, it's kind of like um, when you did that, it's like pouring salt on a slug. It's like shining a light. Is, is it a vampire that can't be around light? Whatever it is, you know, you exposed him with the words that you said, like hurtful words. That's not going to make a man pick up, pack his bags and move. And then just uh, he ghosted you essentially. And so that's not going to make you expose him. You call him out on some things that he really felt guilty about. So here's what you have to do. You got to realize that you broke a you know cardinal rule of trying to turn a friend into a lover you broke a major rule by doing that and so you played yourself in that because you didn't know and you was open to the idea and you're like well hey i've always liked them this can be something the next thing you have to realize is you didn't pay attention to this man and his character. Okay, you were a priest and you get a woman pregnant. You're a priest. Now you lose your priesthood. Now, now you come and you get with me and then you just get engaged to me and then we're together and you start a business. 
None of those things appear to be red flags to you just because you just weren't aware and you were caught up in your love and affection for him. And so really you, you're dealing with a broken, lost, hurting, confused man, borderline con man, but not really because he up and left. If he was a true con man, he would have just took it on the chin, what you said to him and continued to use you for whatever access or money. I mean, you starting a business, you got something going on. So cut them, cut them. You realize that you've been spared. Realize that this guy could be deep down, could be crazy. Know that he's going to come back. He's going to respond, but he's training you right now. He's training you right now. And what the message he's trying to teach you is never in your life. Call me out or question me again because you are old and you are desperate and you are lonely and I am God's gift to you. And if you ever in your life call me on my crap and, you know, spit in my face with the truth, you will never hear from me again. He's training you right now. And so if you don't understand that and get that message, guess what? When he answers next week or the following week, you're going to be like, oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. You finally answer. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Please come back. Please. Let's make it work. Please. Let's keep working on our business. And then he's going to give you a hard time, sweat you out a few more days, and then he's going to come back. But then you're going to be trained to say, OK, I'll never again say what I've been thinking or what I've been feeling. Never again. And then, boom, he has you where he wants you. And then he sucks you dry for all of your savings, all of your money, everything. And then he'll run off again on you. So understand this is your grace. This is your grace because a man who's committed to you does not leave just because you hurt his feelings with some words. This is your grace. God is trying to send you a smoke signal. That's why he sent you to write me and your message was at the top of my inbox. I really was supposed to scroll to the end of my inbox to get to the old messages, but I just started with you. So that's a sign too. This is your grace. Don't take your grace for granted. Get gone. Hey, thank you so much for submitting your question. If you are watching this and you have a question, make sure that you send it in to inbox at tonygaskins.com inbox at tonygaskins.com uh, check the description below thank you to all of my patrons it's, it's been a blessing working with you um, on patreon and providing exclusive content the link is in the description so if you want to join the crew thank you so much i look forward to talking to you soon